So I have an interface like that when I open Arena for the first time. Now, my friends, uh, there is this thing here in the view here and in toolbars. Let me show you this first. Actually, this is not the order of explaining that I would like to do, but uh, in view here under toolbars, we have a option, an option which is called large buttons. If I remove the click here, then the buttons are going to be smaller here. However, I mean, for lecturing purposes, I would like to make them larger especially so you can see them easily. However, actually the default, the default of this view is with small buttons. OK, but we are going to use these buttons so frequently. So I want to I want to make them large and we are going to see this customized window in any way a few times so you can easily remember where you can increase the size of the buttons which you are going to use and unfortunately there is no way of enlarging these parts so this is the project bar and we have to use some modules from this project bar and there is no way of uh, increasing the size of that so this is what we are going to get I, I'm going to zoom in as much as possible in, or, in order to help you to see uh, the things that I'm going to create. So let me introduce you to R, uh, Arena. So we have two windows, as you can hear. The first window at top, which is a little larger, and we have a second window at the bottom. So actually, you can play around with the sizes of these windows like this, but at the top, the window that we have is called the flow chart view. So this is the flow chart view. And this window is called the spreadsheet view. Now, we are going to be able to use both parts of this window. So we are going to create our models in the flow chart view. However, we are going to change rules, regulations, the parameters, and every statistical information from the spreadsheet view, okay? So the flowchart view has some limitations. Actually, you can do many things here in the flowchart view, but uh, I mean, when you are using this machine, you are using the software, you need to be capable of using both windows at the same time simultaneously. So we need to understand the relationship between those two. And so we have this, Thing. And we have view here, and in the under the view we have split screen option, which is given at the moment. If I click on that, then I am just going to see the flowchart view. I do not see the sp uh, spreadsheet view, as you can see. And if I click on split screen again, again I will see two views at the same time: the flowchart view and the spreadsheet view. Okay. So this is the project bar. On the left-hand side, we see the project bar, OK? Now, you can turn on and off the project bar by the, uh, clicking with the right button here. And if you click on that, project bar will be removed. And you can turn on the project bar here like that. So project bar is going to be the most commonly, frequently used tool in Arena simulations. And in this project bar, we have several panels. What are these panels? The basic process panel, as you can see here. When you click on a panel, you are going to expand it and see the tools inside it, OK? And we have uh, advanced process panel. But when you open Arena for the first time, the advanced process panel may not be uh, visible, OK? We have advanced transfer panel. So some of these panels are by default going to be visible. OK, going to be visible when you open Arena for the first time. However, some of them will not be uh, visible. Now, how we can turn on and off these panels, I am going to show you. OK, now we also have the reports panel here. We also have the reports panel and reports panel is a little different than the other panels above. In the other panels, we have several modules which we are going to use to create our models. OK, however, in the reports model uh, module, uh, I'm sorry, reports panel, 
what we see is the result documentation. So when the simulation is going to be complete, you are going to click on the reports panel here and from here you can see the reports related to the simulation results. For example, all the performance metrics that we calculate by hand in uh, the last simulation example that we have done, which is the MMG1 simulation, they are all, the results can all be available in these reports when you uh, observe them in detail. And we also have the navigation panel here. The navigation panel gives us a big picture, the big picture of the model that we have created. So let me show you, for example, if I introduce a few models here, modules here, okay? So I'm just making the modules up, okay? So do not, please do not think that I am doing sensible things here. I am not, okay? I have just created a model here. As you can see in the navigation here, you can play around with the large model that you have created, as you can see, okay? So this is a very, very big picture of the model that you have created by zooming out, and you can navigate in your large model that you have created because the models are going to be very complicated, and sometimes you will not be able to see the whole model in a single view here, and you are going to require the navigation uh, panel. And also, you can create hierarchical models, okay, hierarchical models, in which we can create models, inside models, we have sub-models, and inside sub-models, we have sub-sub-models. So we can create such hierarchical models. In that case, the hierarchical levels are going to be seen here. Right now, there is a single level here. We are going to work in a single level, and that is the top level. However, if you create a sub-model within a, a model, then you are going to see that sub-model in this hierarchical tree structure under the top level, okay? So, actually, in this class, we are not going to use these hierarchical models at all, but I'm going to show you how you can create sub-models and how this hierarch hierarchy will be seen in the Navigate panel as well, okay? So, as I have told you that we have a few mo uh, panels here, and the most commonly used panel will be the basic process panel. So today we are just going to focus on the tools in the basic process panel. But at this point, let me show you how you can attach new panels and how you can detach them, okay? So let's just say, in this simulation project, I am not going to use the advanced transfer uh, panel at all, okay? So I want to detach it. I want to remove that. So what you can do is, from file, you can choose template panel here, and while, while the advanced transfer panel is open, while the advanced panel uh, transfer panel is open, you choose file, a template panel, from file, the template panel, and from here you say detach, okay? So detach, if I detach that, as you can see, the advanced transfer panel is not visible anymore, okay? Now I can attach it again, again from template panel attach, and in that case, the attach template panel is going to direct me to the templates list in a folder. The templates have the TPO, in, uh, TPO so let me make it a little zoomed in, okay? So you see, the TPO extension belongs to the templates of the uh, Arena software. So what are these templates we have? We see here? For example, we have statistics, we have blocks, which we are going to use in our future courses. And as you can see, we have advanced transfer template panel here, which we have turned off a while ago. So I click on that and I say open, and when I say open, you can easily see that advanced transfer panel is back again, but this time at the bottom, okay? Because it is the last turned on panel here, okay? Now, this is a temporary way of turning off and on the template panels, and you can also permanently determine that by default when you open any error in a project, you can determine the default panels that you would like to turn on by 
tools, from these tools, we have options. Okay, under tools, we have options. And when you click on options, you will see settings here. Okay, the settings here, the settings tab. Under the settings tab, we have what we have, the list of default panels, the list of default panels, which are going to be turned on when we open an Arena project. For example, I can remove the advanced transfer TPO file and advanced process TPO file from here. And if I click on that, if I click on that and click OK and turn off my arenas and turn it on again. As you can see here easily, these panels are not here by default. OK, so this is a permanent way of turning off the panels. OK, now let me go back again from tools and options. I need to add these two panels here again, and by default, they are going to be open, okay? So I need to identify their names, of course, from the file, and I'm not going to do that. You know how you can do that in any way, okay? Okay, so let me introduce a module again. Let's just introduce the process module. Now, by scrolling your mouse, by scrolling your mouse up and down, you are going to move around the uh, project, uh, I'm sorry, the process view, process view or the flow chart view uh, vertically, okay? But if you click control, right now I'm, uh, I'm pressing on control button on my keyboard. If you press the control button and again, uh, play around with the scroll of your mouse, then you are going to zoom out and zoom in, okay? So this is going to be very useful again. However, you can change the zoom from that part as well. I mean, you can change the zoom to 10%, 100%, or you can say 400%, so you can make the module as large as possible. So you can play around with zoom and navigate over your flowchart view manually as well, okay? Again, we have these scroll bars here, okay? From the scroll bars, from the scroll bars, you can again play around with navigation, okay? You can navigate around your model when you create such large models, okay? Now, in the view toolbar here, under the view toolbar, we have a few options that we can turn on and off. The first one is rulers. So if you turn on rulers, you are going to enable two rulers, both horizontal ruler and a vertical ruler here to measure the size of your model that you have created. Rulers can be very useful for advanced users, but for us, it is not going to be very helpful. Instead, we have, we are going to turn off the ruler, but we are going to turn on grid. So grids are going to turn your flow chart view with dots. Uh, it is going to uh, uh, furnish, it is going to refurbish the flow chart view with uh, equally spaced dots. And these equally spaced dots are going to help us what? Now, when I move this process uh, module here, as you can see, it is snapping, it is snapping to dots, okay? So, for example, if I create another process here, I can align that process with the top process by the help of these grid lines, okay? So, I have turned these grids, and I can see the dots here. Maybe because uh, of your uh, resolution of your video, you may not be able to see these dots, but I can see them right now. And if you turn off the guides, if you turn off the guides, then, um, okay, I'm sorry. So let me turn on the guides again. Now, if the guides are turned on with the also rulers, let me show you. So both rulers and guides are turned on. Now, from the ruler, I click on and take a guide that is vertical. And from that ruler, I click on and move a guide which is horizontal. 
Now I can, as you can see, I can snap these modules. When I create them, I can snap these modules either from the side or from the middle. Okay. So these guides are going to be very helpful for me for aligning my project modules. Okay. Now I am going to remove these guides. Maybe I am going to create them again. But in order to remove them, first you need to detach your processes from that. Okay. So. So I need to remove it by taking it here, but I cannot see a way of doing that. I think, I think here, once they are created, if you click on guides, again, they are going to be automatically removed in any way. Okay. And this snap to grid option, snap to grid option, if it is turned on, as you can see, the processes are snapped to the dots only. Okay. However, if you want to move freely, without snapping to the grids okay for example let me create a guide as well so i can move freely here without snapping without snapping in any way to the grids okay so but in that case the alignment is going to be a little problem okay so maybe you can easily see here as i try to align there is a break here okay so the alignments may not be perfect in that case. So I usually prefer to choose with the option snap to grid. I usually turn off rulers and I usually turn off guides whenever I do not need to use them. And I only use the grids. I only use the grids and the snap to grid option. Okay. So we have learned about this as well. Another important thing that we need to learn is the expression builder. Okay, expression builder. Now, there are many ways of opening the expression builder, my friends. Okay, so here under the tools, under the tools here, we have the expression builder here. And a shortcut of the expression builder is also here. This Sigma X button is the expression builder, which will be very helpful to identify the comments that we are going to write to describe some, for example, statistical distributions or um, some, for example, uh, formulations and which can we create, which we can create here. OK, so let's just say, let's just say I want to identify. I, I don't know if you can see these uh, writings. I don't know, but I mean, I'm going to read them in any way. So, I want to identify the comment which generates random variates from normal distribution, let's just say. Okay, so I need to identify the comment which generates normal random variates with a certain parameter setting. So I click on random distributions here. So there are many headers here. I click on random distributions and under the random distributions, I identify normal. And when I click on normal, it asks me what would be the mean of the normal distribution. Let's just say it is going to be 10. The mean is going to be 10 and the standard deviation is going to be 1. So in that case, the expression builder will write down the comment here, which is nor parenthesis 10, comma, uh, comma 1. So this expression, my friends, is the generators for a normal random variate with location parameter equal to 10 and standard deviation equal to 1. So if, for example, you cannot identify the comment that you need to write, if you do not know the comment that you write, now expression builder here is a very, very helpful tool to help you to identify the expression that you need to write. We are going to use that in our applications in any way. And let's just talk about the basic process panel now. OK, so I am erasing everything here. Now, in this basic process panel, I have two different types of modules. So as you can see it above, I have 60 uh, or 12. I am sorry, 12 modules here. These modules are called flowchart modules. 
So you can take these modules and click on them and you can simply move them on the flowchart view to attach these modules into your flowchart. Okay? However, as you can see under the basic process panel here, we also have other types of modules, which are called data modules. Okay? You cannot take these data modules and move them here. Okay? Data modules are, when you click on them, they are going to be opened on the spreadsheet view. Okay? Basically, you are going to use the flowchart modules to move them on the flowchart view and create your model in the flowchart format. However, when you want to change anything related to attributes, entities, or queue processes, for example, the uh, queue discipline, in that case, you need to click on this queue spreadsheet view, and the queue spreadsheet view will be opened here as a spreadsheet, okay, as a spreadsheet. Now, my friends, I want to change my resolution again. Maybe it is going to be a little helpful. So this, maybe I need to increase that. I don't know. Okay, I think that is better now, right? So you can see, I think, everything, the names, the headers. So it has been better now, I think. Okay, so you see we have uh, 12 flowchart modules here. Create, dispose, process, decide, batch, clone, separate, assign, so and so forth. And we have six different spreadsheet modules. When we click on them, they are going to be opened in the spreadsheet view. So we have spreadsheet modules related to attributes, entities, queues, resources, variables, schedules, sets, and pictures. My friends, you can create a basic simulation model just by using the basic process model, okay? So these modules here in the, under the basic process panel are creating the tools that we frequently use 80% of the time. The other panels, in the other panels, we are going to have other type of models which we are going to use less frequently. Okay, less frequently, not very frequently. Okay, so we have, uh, you need to understand the distinction between flowchart modules. These are the flowchart modules which you can move into the flowchart view to create your model. And these table view modules are the spreadsheet modules. When you click on them, they are going to be open in the spreadsheet view, okay? And as I have told you, we can turn on the advanced process panel. We also have advanced process panel here, okay? And when you click on the advanced process panel, you will see other type of modules here. But unlikely to the basic process panel, you see every model has a different shape here. Okay, for example, the shape of create is like this. The shape of process is a simple rectangle. And the dispose is the symmetric of the create module. Okay, so we have batch. We have clone. Okay, so every module here has a different shape. However, in other process panels, like advanced process panel, you can see that every module in the advanced process panels are having the same shape. They are all rectangles, okay? So in the advanced process panels, we will have some uh, modules that we are going to use in any way, okay? We are going to learn a few more things about this. And at this point, maybe today they are not going to be useful for us, but uh, starting from uh, tomorrow, or not tomorrow, next week, we are also going to use the modules in the advanced process panels as well. Okay?